I'm extremely excited for this segment of the Leading Woman Summit for Forbes Woman Africa 2021. We're discussing how to become a billionaire with Apostle Folorancho Alakija. You are most welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, and thank you for having me. It it's is a pleasure. It is an absolute honor to have you. And I'm gonna dive straight in because we have so much to learn from you. You are one of the most celebrated female moguls in Africa, but also globally. You have set a benchmark of excellence in terms of your business life and also your personal life. You are like a role model to so many young entrepreneurs that are trying to balance a successful family unit, but also being successful in business. What would you say is your key recipe to success? Well, over the years, I have noticed that as you progress in life, you're meeting up with hurdles, um, no matter what you've planned. Mm -hmm. And I've come up with my own mantras that, have, that are still guiding me. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's limited to that. It could expand later on, but I spell out success. We thank God that uh, he has brought me this far. My first S is seek God every day. Seek God every day. Get him to be your major helper. You Utilize your time and talent wisely. It's important. Because if you don't use it wisely, you'll mess up along the way. C, credibility and reliability. Make them your watchwords. Because people who are unreliable get ignored. Nobody wants to have anything to do with them because it's all about your reputation. Consistently focus on your goal because there's nothing you should do without having a plan. And that's your goal. You, you need to have a place that you want to get to by a certain time. You have your initial, uh, the medium, and you know your final goal. So work towards your goal. There will be distractions, but make sure that you remain focused. E, educate yourself. Train and retrain. And why do you need to do that? Ignorance is, is, is expensive. S, say no to discouragement agents because people will try to discourage you. For sure. When you want to go this way, some may be telling you, no, 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 don't do it that way. Do this way, do it that way. Be sure that it, you don't get discouraged from getting to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. The last is sacrifice daily. Make sacri daily sacrifices by going the extra mile. If you don't go the extra mile, and you get shaken along the way, you'll find that you may fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. Because when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Mm -hmm. God has helped me with that so, so far. He has brought me this far with it. It's been working. I feel like it's been working to an, a pretty amazing level because most people will know you and recognize you because you are a huge oil magnate. Um, and with the work you've done on Fan for Oil and also your charitable work, um, people recognize that standard of success that you function in. But before this, you were actually an extremely successful fashion designer as well. What would you say when you look at that track record of excellence and success that you've lived out in your, your personal journey? What would you say is your greatest achievement to date? Hmm. How could I ever miss that? I love that question. Had it not been for God, I would not be where I am today. My salvation. My salvation experience has brought me this far. We need God. So many people don't realize that. 
they think they can achieve things, whatever they want to do, of their own free will, their own revolutions. But you find that if you put God in his place, his rightful place in your business, I always say that business is God's business. He, and make him your chief stakeholder. And you make him your, your, your principal invisible chairman. He will guide you. Mm -hmm. He'll give you wisdom. He'll lead you in the way you should go. Mm -hmm. He'll help you. And if you trust in him well enough, you can't go, you, you, can't, you, you can't fail. Because God isn't a failure. And if he's a major stakeholder in a business, why would he allow that business to fail? Yes. But people get it wrong. They say, hey, wait a minute. We are talking business here. When it comes to God matters, we'll go to church on Sunday. Mm. Don't worry about that. That's where they get it completely wrong. God wants a relationship with us mm -hmm. through and through in everything mm -hmm. that we do. Mm -hmm. He wants to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Do you know, even in your cooking, he wants to be part of your cooking while you're cooking. He wants to be talking to you. So, I believe that you should not leave God out of your business. Mm -hmm. He has been my guiding factor, my chief partner. And it's just the best way to go. You will come across challenges. Yes. And when you come across those challenges, which is normal, nothing ever comes to us on a platter of gold. Yes. Nothing, you, are, you don't achieve anything on a platter of gold. That's not how the world started. Well, it should have been like that, but as you know, yes. Adam failed. And so now we have to work for everything that we, we, we want to achieve. I feel that when I, I mean, we've discussed your journey several times and it's been such a learning experience because you've actually faced what I would perceive and so many others perceived as a near impossible feat. Um, when you were actually fighting for that Igbami field oil block against the government, most people probably didn't believe that you would overcome. Um, for you to be able to go against all odds and fight that failure, what would be your advice for entrepreneurs who are also trying to overcome failure? I know you've mentioned that your faith is very key. Very, very but important. When a young entrepreneur who's building their faith alongside their business, what would you say are the key actionable steps that they can use when they're facing difficulty and challenges and failure in their entrepreneurial journey? Well, first and foremost, in starting out, Apart from the God factor, because you have your roles to play as well, you have to set your mind to know that you need to take risks. An entrepreneur who is not a risk taker is a non-starter. So you have to know that it is in the risk taking that you need to make certain decisions mm -hmm. and make them at the right time. Yes. Because if you make good decisions late you're causing problems for yourself you're mm -hmm. inviting problems mm -hmm. if you make wrong decisions don't think it's the end of the world mm -hmm. when you fall be ready to get up back up again there's a there, 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 there's a word in the bible that says in proverbs 24 10 i think it is that if you fail if you fail at the, at, the, uh, at the point of adversity, your strength is weak. Mm -hmm. a, a, a good child of God needs to ask for strength. Yep. We need to ask for everything from God. He's willing and ready to give us everything. There's nothing he's not ready to give to us so long as we're asking in line with his will. So if you ask for strength, and if you fail along the line while you're still waiting for, for the strength to build you up, you understand? Get up again. 
get back up because it's in your getting up that you'll be able to prosper later on mm -hmm. by learning from your mistakes or your circumstances or, or the experience that you, 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 you just had because then you'll, you'll do a better job next time. You learn from your failures. Mm -hmm. Do you get my point? Yes. So don't give up. Yes. That's very, very important. Extremely important. Get back up again and begin to run with uh, whatever it is that you need to do to get to where you need to be. Remain focused. Keep your, your goal ahead of you. Keep it in front of you. Uh, make sure that you're wo working towards it. You're, 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 you have your eye on it. Don't miss, don't, don't miss the mark. Yes, you have a starting point. It's like a race where the, the, you know, it says on your marks, mm -hmm. ready, steady, go. Yes, there's a goal. That's where you want to get to. Don't think that the goal is going to come to you. You need to go to the goal. Mm -hmm. So you need to work towards it. You need to plan towards it. Mm -hmm. So I, I even think that failure is good. Because it is in your failure that you can get better and better. Mm -hmm. So, I thank God that yes, we have challenges to to you know to, to, to you know to, to deal with, yes. to face, and you call in, you know, the grace of God, the mercy of God, and you focus yourself, you focus your mind on. Wanting to be an achiever, mm -hmm. to, or to, to overtake those hurdles mm -hmm. that, that are facing you, mm -hmm. that you're dealing with daily, monthly, yearly, to be able to become an overcomer, mm -hmm. an achiever. I love the fact that you are mentioning the word achiever. Um, in terms of achievements and a high achiever, um, there was a point where you were actually the wealthiest black woman alive. Um, and so when you talk about achievements, you, you really have broken ceilings. But one thing that I found very interesting, and I, I love the title of this segment because it's called How to Become a Billionaire. And a lot of people would assume we're about to talk money. But one of the main things that I always noticed about you and admire about you is that your faith is the thing that leads you and that guides you. Have you ever, though, reached a point where the silent chairman that you seek in your business, which is God for you, have you ever found that there's any business decision that has actually clashed with your religious and your faith, um, your religious beliefs, sorry, and your faith? Have you ever found a moment where those two don't align and how do you deal with it? Well, I certainly w won't get into uh, any business that's... Uh, um that's uh, not in line with the word of God. I won't, won't lie. I won't cheat. I won't get involved with the wrong type of people. Uh, I make sure that uh, my faith guides me in my decision making and, uh, and in what I have to do on a daily basis in, in line with my businesses. Because the minutes that you allow um, negativity to creep in mm -hmm. that's not in line with the word of God, then you're inviting problems. You're asking for, you know, things that you really sh wouldn't know how to deal with. It's not the way God wants you to work mm -hmm. or, or live mm -hmm. or, or interact or, or build your business or, or walk your journey. So, if you, invite, if you allow any of that, you know, to come, to creep in, as I said, you're, 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 you're asking for trouble. I've, I admire the fact that as you've allowed this process and these principles to guide you, um, one thing that really sticks out to me is that you refuse to stop. You keep going, you keep persevering, you keep pushing. With all your achievements in business, um, in philanthropy, what is it that motivates you to keep pushing despite your amazing success? I'm a workaholic. <laughs> so I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> I love working. Um, if I'm not working, I can get sick. 
and I don't usually get sick yeah. because I'm always doing something. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I'm very energetic. Um, there are things I, 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 I do that I'm, I shouldn't do. Things like working too late, mm -hmm. not getting enough sleep. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because I enjoy love. I love and yes. I enjoy working. Yeah. So my mom trained all her children to work hard. Mm -hmm. She trained us to believe, and I know it's true, mm -hmm. that it's hard, it, it's laziness that, 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 that kills people. Hard work will not kill you. Mm -hmm. Hard work won't kill you. So I love working. I work extremely hard. And everybody around me, they just have to fall in line. Right. Otherwise, we can't work together. Right. So um, I'm focused with that. It helps me get along to achieve my aims and objectives. Uh, daily, monthly, we are weekly, monthly, and, and yearly, and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I set my priorities. I set my goals. And, you know, I work towards it. Um, so that's very important for me, working hard. Working hard is, is extremely important, and I, I enjoy it, and uh, I look forward to the next day. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, oh, the, the, the night is dragging. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's do this every morning. Here we go. Yeah. You, let's jump in. What I admire is even when you speak about your approach to every single day, your mindset has always been one of legacy, long term. Mm -hmm. um, the decisions you make with your family, the decisions you make in business are always thinking 10, 15 years ahead. And I've always been impressed about your ability to do that because many people get stuck in the here and now. What would you say is the legacy of Apostle Follow-on Shaw Ali Kija that you would like to leave behind for not only Africa, but the rest of the world? The legacy I'd love to leave behind is... Um one to, to, one, to die empty. Amen. To die empty by pouring myself out mm -hmm. the virtues that God has given me, mm -hmm. that I've, I've lived with over the years, that, has, that have helped me over the years, to pour them out into others. Mm -hmm. And help to ensure there'll be many more like me, Amen. especially amongst the women. I've been very privileged to um, interact with some of the ladies in the Flourish Africa um, platform that you run. And one thing I notice they're always in love with is the millionaire status. Um, how does it feel to be defined as a billionaire? Um, and this is in dollars. I know that you're very humble and it's, it's not something that, that you're governed by. But is there... A ginger. That's <laughs> when people say this is a billionaire apostle follower on short alakija. Um at the initial stage I didn't set out to want to be a billionaire. I just wanted to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um add to what we already had on ground, you know, as best I could, um, to be able to help others as I uh, go along in my journey. And also to leave a, a, you know, an inheritance mm -hmm. for, for my children and you know, family. Um, I don't know what's in other people's pockets. Yes, I hear richest woman in, in mm -hmm. Africa, richest woman in the world. Um, I hear it. I claim it. I say, oh, amen. I receive you it. it. You're, you're I claim it. it. Can I claim it from you, please? <laughs> I claim it from you in Jesus' name. <laughs> I, I claim it. I don't say, yes, yes, that's what I am. But I claim it. Yeah, that's what I want to be. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't know what's in anybody's pocket. Yes. You understand? I'm not in compet competition with anyone. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what you know, other people have in their bank accounts. So for me, it's not about that. Yes. It, it, it's about being able to, to live a life, being able to go on a journey uh, where you, yes, you, 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 everybody wants to be comfortable. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So as, as you are going on that journey, and if, if you hit it, and you hit it big, to God be the glory. So here we are. I want to ask you, and it's a similar stream of that thought. Um, it may not be a monetary thing, mm. but there's no doubt that you live as a wealthy individual. 
What does true wealth, though, mean to you? Because a lot of people think when I say wealth, they will automatically think I'm saying money, which I'm not. Could you please define, and I've had the privilege of seeing up close, um, which is why I've said that. What does wealth truly mean to you, please? Wealth means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do say that health is wealth. Yes. It's true. Mm -hmm. Some people, for them to say that they've been able to achieve their goals, that for them, this is their wealth. Yes. It could be that this person wants to ensure that all his or her children go to Ivy League universities. Yes. Or that they all get married and have children and he or she is able to see his great-grandchildren before they die. For them, that is wealth. Mm -hmm. You understand? For me, there's no amount of wealth that I could have that could change me. Mm -hmm. I will always be who I am. Mm -hmm. I will, I'm down to earth for those who really know me. Mm -hmm. I'm down to earth. I don't have any heirs. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not shopping for top-of-the-range labels. No. Whatever I see that I find that I like... I will buy it. Yeah. And it could be the cheapest thing. But because I like it, I will buy it. The ability to be able to live in, 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 in a way and in a world where you have peace of mind. Mm -hmm. For me, that is wealth. Yes. In a life that you are living, where you are able to reach out and touch and assist others, as you go along your journey, for me, that is wealth. You're living a life and you have no one to share it with, that's not wealth. Mm -hmm. You're living a life and you have grace abounding in your life. The mercy of God mm -hmm. shows up in your life. Mm -hmm. And with people around you, they are being blessed. They are not being pulled down. Mm -hmm. That is wealth. Mm -hmm. That's why I said wealth means so many different things to different people. All of that means wealth to me. Mm -hmm. I want to ask this final question, um, which I admire so much about how you function. Um, a lot of people know you as the entrepreneur. They know you as this powerhouse businesswoman. Um, but the wife, the mother, the grandmother is actually roles that you play to your fullest. How are you able to balance all of them and do them so exceptionally well? Well, I know that grace abounds. God gives me grace. I know that I prioritize for every day. Before I say my prayer in the morning, I jot down notes of things that I want to get out of the way mm -hmm. so that it does not disturb my prayer. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I'm able to now pray with a, 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 uh, a, the peace of, with, with, with peace in my heart. Commune with my God. You understand? So I run a race. From that point on, after I've said my breath, I run a daily race on things that I want to achieve. And one majorly is family. Once God comes first, next is family. What do you need to do with your family for the day, mm -hmm. for the month, for the quarter, for the year? What do you want to achieve? You have to Draw those lines, set goals, your small-term goals, your medium-term goals, and your long-term goals. Run with it. Without a plan, of course, we all know the answer to that. You're planning to fail.
it's it, it, it's a matter of prioritizing. It, it's it's key. It's very important, and also enjoying every bit of everything mm -hmm. that you're doing, and ensuring that you're doing it well, God's way. I love it. Absolutely amazing. I think one of the biggest takeaways I've actually had is that the session is how to be a billionaire, but you show that it's a holistic growth process. It and it's about balancing the home, the family, the relationships, money, and everything in between. And you've done it with such excellence and grace. Thank you for giving me your time today and giving us all the opportunity to learn from such a great mind and mogul. God bless you, Madam Apostle Florence Alakija. You have been remarkable yet again. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.